Okay, part three of the Pathfinder series of Let's Start Up a um, Character. We are going to get into ability modifiers. So as, you, as you're aware, we have different things here. I'm going to go with intelligence. Let's say if you take an intelligence skill, we're going to go with... Um, well, let's just go with something generic. Let's say you're going to use your smarts in order to figure something out. So let's say I say, okay, that's fine. We're going to use an intelligence-based uh, DC or difficulty check. Uh, we'll go with 12. Okay. So if you look under intelligence, your modifier is plus 2. So basically you would roll a 1d20, as I'm going to do now. And you add the results of that roll. Uh, to the, you add to the result of that roll the ability modifier. So unfortunately, I have rolled a 2. <laughs> this person did not have a brilliant moment. Um, so, the ability modifier makes it uh, add an additional 2. That's a 4. So of course that fails, because you want to meet or beat the target number of the DC or difficulty check. And that was 12. So in this case, because it is a 4 or less, I would probably consider that a critical failure. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around, because to give people a fair shot, take a percentile dice. 50 or below, and they have just come up with a really screwed up idea. 50 or above, they're safe. They just they realized that they realized it wasn't a very good idea. 50 or below, they didn't, and they probably have a warped idea depending on the degrees of failure, which is I was saying the 10 or more. Okay, so this person rolled a 70, so it was a 76, so 50 or above, they're safe. Had they rolled like a 20, that would have been like three degrees of failure, so that would have been if they they really would have had some messed up ideas about whatever the situation was. But let's say they take a, the next turn, they decide to try again. 19. So they made it with a pretty decent success. And uh, if it was a 20, I would have gone ahead and done the other thing to degree of success. It wasn't, though. It was a 19. So I had 2 1 to that. And of course, it's a 20. or 21. Um, if, the, if the rule was a 20, then I would have gone with it. But again, it didn't. So. Okay. So basically, that's, that's basically what you would call as far as skill checks and modifiers. Um, the other thing is, of course, they have a strength plus zero, which if I'm rolling um, a d20 to figure out whether it's a hit or not, I just rolled an 11. You add the uh, base attack bonus, which depends on the ra on the class, which for a level one sorcerer, the, the base attack bonus is absolutely z nothing. It's zero. It's dead. So we don't have to worry about that. So basically, it was... Um, they rolled an 11, okay? No bonuses, no additional, let's say, arm, unarmed damage. That's, yeah, just a 1d4, okay? Basically, if the per, if the monster's AC or target's AC is 10 or less, excuse me, 11 or less, then that would be a hit, just because it hit the AC. It did. Ties in that case go to the attacker just because. Um, if it doesn't, then it misses, and you can role play that out however you want. You know, I take a swing. Basically, the best the best etiquette for etiquette for that is um, Mr. Onion decides to punch the orc. Of course, that would be the one time he rolls a natural twenty. <laughs> okay. So we're going that way. Apparently I'm, cri I'm explaining critical hits now. Not exactly the, the order I wanted to do it in, but we'll work with that. Okay, so I rolled a 20. And we're going to say the orc has an AC or armor class of about 14, uh, no, about 12. Which means you have to make a, tw a 12 or more to hit him. No base attack bonus, no strength bonus, it's just a flat out 20, so he definitely makes it. On top of that... Because he rolled a 20, now most people generally, they roll to confirm. I don't usually like to do that a whole lot, especially since that tends to happen. And then, of course, you basically you have to meet the AC a second, uh, the armor class a second time in order to confirm. Um, 
I usually don't like to do that, so I usually don't. And that's why, because that tends to happen, and I don't like to cheat people out of an epic moment. So what happens when you roll a critical? Um, if there are any additional effects that are listed, those usually come into play. Um, usually what happens is you take the damage, which in this case is an armor strike, so we're going to go with 1d4, and it's a 4, nice. And it uh, is multiplied by 2, in some cases by 3. So in this case, the orc just got dealt 4 damage. If there's anything like uh, damage resistance or anything like that, then you're protected by that. As far as armor, armor usually adds to the armor class as well. Um, which is actually what we're going to get into now. So now you have an idea of how attacks work. Not exactly a different uh, segue, but okay, we'll work with that. Uh, skills is much like the combat to a certain degree. For the skill check I mentioned with the intelligence-based one, um, basically let's say you have... we're going to go with this. You're making a dungeoneering check to kind of just determine the layout of the dungeon, or not really the dungeon, but you know how it's kind of made. You're trying to get an idea as to who made it, so you can figure out what you might be up against. So I say, okay, this is basic common knowledge, so we're going to go with DC 10. It's skill-based check, add intelligence, roll, and a 5. That is the plus 2, plus an additional 3. So you're going to put 5... And then any ranks that you have in the skill, let's say you had two ranks in Knowledge Dungeoneering. So it's now a 7. Unfortunately, it is still 3 shy. So, so and of course, it's for, the original roll was under 4, or over 4, so you're not going to have to worry about getting any crazy ideas either. <laughs> Starting characters... So they do tend to get crazy ideas. It figures with any experience in life. You're going to get strange ideas into stuff and about stuff and do weird things until you get knowledgeable and do, hey, don't do that. <laughs> anyway, I will try to keep you from dying the first couple of sessions, I swear. It's just not easier in us all that way. Plus, it's not that fun if you just die right off the bat before you can have any real fun. Um, so, now that I've explained that, life goes on. Uh, we're going to go into straight into AC, which is divided in three segments, which is original armor, just basic armor class, uh, touch armor class, that means somebody walks up and does a touch attack with like a spell or something that's by touch in nature, um, or flat-footed, which basically means you're caught by surprise. And there are also certain spells that can do this, so the rules on that are pretty weird. Um, for AC in general, uh, we're not going to we're going to give him an armor, armor bonus of one for his clothing. Um, shield bonus, he doesn't have any, because he's a sorcerer, they don't use a lot of shields. Dexterity modifier is going to be zero, because there's no dexterity size. Zero, because it's medium. Uh, natural armor, none. Um, deflection modifier, none. And miscellaneous modifiers, none. So basically, his basic AC is going to be 11. So you add all those to the bonuses together, plus 10, and because it's only he only has one little armor bonus, he gets an AC of 11. Did I mention that yet that wizards are generally kind of on the squishy side? Yeah, they usually hang back and do a lot of spell casting or driving people crazy. Probably why I get along so well with those classes. Anyway, uh, we're going to go into touch armor class. Um, basically, if there's any armor bonuses or natural armor bonuses, they are removed from your AC total. So because all he had was his armor bonus of 1, um, he winds up instead with an AC of 10 for his uh, touch armor bonus. So if a person is using a touch spell and they have to make a uh, roll against armor class, they have to make a 10 or better as opposed to 11. Uh, flat footed just removes dex bonus and that's basically air to deflection modifiers, I think. At the very least, dex bonus. So, um, oh no, 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 no. No, they keep their shield bonus. I think it's basically just their uh, dex bonus that's counted. I'll have to look that up again. So basically, again, nothing changes. It's still an 11. So if they're caught by surprise, nothing too big deal. He just doesn't want to get caught, period, because everything for him kind of sucks. So if an orc is trying to attack him, and we're just going to say he has similar stats as far as... Um, he has no bonuses one way or the other just to keep it easy. Again, we're going to roll a 1d20. A 14. 14 beats an AC of 11, so that attack's going to go through, and let's just say it's 1d6 damage. 
four damage is what's dealt to Mr. Onion here. And yes, his name is Onion, but I'm going to call him Mr. Onion because I find it hilarious. Um, and of course, for that, we go back to HP. HP is going to be in this case, it is 1d8, which is the level, and then an 8-sider. So, 9. Oh, no, 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 that's right, that's right. I was, how did I get, wow, I picked up the wrong dice. Um, that brings me to the other thing. That would only, one, that dice doesn't count because I did something retarded, and two, okay, there it is, the 6. Which is kind of freaky when you think about it, it's a... My dice are playing with me today. Okay, so we're moving along. So basically, if it was a second level, you would add that six on there, and that would be that. As far as the first level, the first dice, which in this case is an eight, um, is added on it every turn. In this case, I think I may have got it wrong. Maybe it's the six, actually. But we're going to go with d8 just because. Um, so we're going to put one d8, and then we're going to put equals h. DR, which is damage resistance, um, which in the case of the four damage would negate whatever the damage resistance was, be negated by whatever the damage resistance was. So let's say he had DR2. Um, you roll 26 and you get a four. He now only takes two damage. But he has no damage resistance, so he would be still takes four. Um, the rule on first level characters is that the first dice they get the full amount of. So if they have a 1d8, they have 8 HP plus whatever their constitution mod is. Now, since he just took four de damage, he is basically down to half his life. Some cases we call it bloodied, if you want to go by fourth edition terms. And you might incur certain effects with that if you're doing homebrew or anything like that, because there really are no bloodied rules in uh, Pathfinder. I like to have fun with stuff like that just because I like to see what I can add. Um, so, again... Um, I believe it's if you take negative your, of your life, that's when you risk dying. At zero HP, you basically just pass out. Non-lethal damage. If you take um, non-lethal damage equal to your HP, in this case, eight points of non-lethal damage, you pass out. Most hand-to-hand -hand combat is generally considered non-lethal unless, unless they have the unarmed strike bonus, in which case it deals actual damage. So there's that. And then you have initiative, which relies on dex modifier and any other miscellaneous modifier. As he doesn't have a de uh, initiative bonus, uh, basic, or dex bonus, he basically has an initiative bonus of zero. So what that means is, let's say him and the orc are rolling, in which case we're just going to do d20 here. So he rolls a 7, the orc rolls a 5. There are no bonuses to either one of them. So Mr. Onion goes first, Mr. Orc goes second. That's how initiative works. If he had, um, let's say, let's say this, let's say Mr. Orc had an initiative bonus of three because he had a really good dexterity for some reason, that would put him up to an eight. So eight versus seven. In this case, then the Orc would go first instead of Mr. Onion. That name's gonna follow him around too. I'm gonna have fun with this. Okay. So now we get on. Oh shoot, it's almost 15 minutes. Um. Oh, no, no, I still have time. We'll go with that. So, Fortitude, Reflex, Dexterity. Um, so, we're going to go with basic saves here. And we're going to go to four classes real quick, since I'm pulling it up here. And... Oh, I was right. It was a D6. We're going to go with D8 anyway. Let's just say special. He's an NPC anyway, who cares? Okay, so base attack bonus, of course, nothing. Uh, the only thing that they really get at first level for a sorcerer is a will save of plus two. So that's the base save. And because he has an extra point in that, he has ability modifier of one, no magic or miss modifiers, which you can use potions to temporarily aid you in that, like full strength for strength or, yeah. Fox's Wisdom, that sort of thing. Hmm, Owl's, Owl's Clarity. Stuff that you can basically beef up certain things. Or Fox's Cunning, that's what it was. Um, so in this case, he has nothing for uh, base reflex save, 
Nothing for an ability modifier, and I'm really feeling sorry for this guy right now. I'm almost tempted to play him out at some point as an NPC just to see how screwed up he gets. Um, which is why I will be using him for a lot of base playtesting. Um, so fortitude-wise, he has nothing. So if he makes a D if he has to make a difficulty check based on poison, he has a 1 to 20 chance. Or he's, his basic range is 1 to 20. If his, if the DC even like DC 10 and such, he has to be careful of. Same with reflex, he's just not very flighty. Uh, Will save on the other hand, he's got you know 1 to 23, so he's got a little bit better of a range. He's a bit more durable in the mental fortitude, not so much in anything else. And then of course we have CMB, which is pushes and such. Um, let's see, size modifier, he's got nothing. Uh, strength modifier, nothing. Base attack bonus, again, nothing. So his CMB is zero. Um, so basically, it would be. Whenever, let's say he's trying to grapple somebody, he would he would roll one d twenty, and in this case, add the CMB to that. B is in boy. Just had to make that settle. So there you go. Roll the seventeen, which is where we get to our next stat, CMD. That's the stat by which defends you from grapples, trips, etc. Actually, no, we'll make it a trip because it's easier. He tries to trip the orc, and the orc's going to go off his stats, so again, oh, nothing, 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 no size modifier. So his CMD is about 10, so anybody can really grab him, trip him, push him, and he makes it. Usually it's every 5, just gives you an extra plus or, or bonus or something. So there we have that. And that's basically it for the most part. Uh, skills is basically skill ranks. I believe it's four points. Oh, no, 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 no. It's your maximum. It's your maximum level. Is your is how many ranks you can put into something. So, as we see here, we have a number of, of things. And we'll just go with the jack-of-all-trades feat here. So, that, so you can say all of those are... Classical space. We're going to go with that, though. We're going to go back to Dungeoneering. So at a level 1, he can put 1 skill point into that, and his skill points are basically going to be uh, 2 plus Intelligence modifier. So 2 plus 2, so his skill ranks per level are going to be 4 per level. So he gets 4, sc four skills he can put in into, so he's going to put 1 into Dungeoneering, 1 into Arcana, um, 1 into Spellcraft, and what else? We're going to say one into diplomacy because he had better be able to be diplomatic the way things are going with him. And aside from that, uh, languages, which in his case would be common, and he gets two others because of his plus two. So it would be, we're just going to say draconic because that's common, and elvish. He doesn't know how to speak work. Or goblin in this case. Uh, weapons, that doesn't need to be worried about, it's just something kind of simplistic. But again, this is just enough so you can get a basic idea as to how to set up your character. Um, so with that, I think I've come to a conclusion for this portion of it. Um, I don't really need to worry about setting up spells and such, that's something I can always go over with somebody personally. Um, yeah, that's it for the time being. So there's a base idea as to what we're looking at, and I hope you enjoyed it. hope it cleared things up a little bit as to our goofy little fun.